Hi, and welcome to another episode of our Digital Masterclass series of the importance of going digital in a post-COVID world. Today's topic, I'll be talking about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a teleportation machine and how to take your business anywhere. Today's agenda, I'll go through uh, where LinkedIn might be relevant to your business, what is LinkedIn and how it's different to Facebook, why you might want to use LinkedIn, the audience purpose and possible objectives, and give you three key recommendations and my top tips on how to build traction. So the focus of this session will be on how to use LinkedIn for yourself as a business owner and how you can create your own personal brand and then how to leverage LinkedIn for your business and how to create your company brand that works alongside with your personal brand. So if we go back to sales, sales in the old days, you may be in a business where in the past or even you may still do it now where you may have a sales force or you may be the, the person who does the business development for your business. And you may have a collection of business cards or even have business cards yourself where you go out and meet prospective customers or you may go and attend conferences, etc., and then spend some, some um, time each week on the telephone, uh, contacting prospects and customers, making appointments. And then on a Monday, you would probably hop into the car and start visiting your customers or prospects to, to sell whatever products or services that you, that you have. But sales has changed in, in the current world. And this is, uh, it's, uh, sorry, this is accelerated somewhat during COVID. And that is sales today is often done in a business to business environment from a desktop uh, before you even know who your prospective customers are it is most likely that they've done some research about you. They may know you already, or they may have looked at solving whatever the business problem that they have online. And according to LinkedIn research in the business to business space, most people will read about 10 pieces of content before they make a purchase. The bigger the purchase, the more likely they'll ask for a reference point opinion. Now, the, the size of the purchase may not necessarily be uh, in relation to the value, in other words, the dollars spent, but it may be in reference to the perceived risk. Uh, it, you may be selling them something that requires a change in their processes or a, a, a significant amount of time in training and development or installation. So LinkedIn is a perfect platform for business to business. It's a perfect platform where um, you can share content, content you've created yourself or other published content. And that content that you, that you create yourself may be content that's existing on your website. Uh, it may be an article that you've written. Um, it may be an opinion piece, or it may be other pub published content from peers or suppliers, or even from mainstream media where you may make comment about it. Um, LinkedIn is also the social networking word of mouth, and a lot of people use it to ask for endorsements and recommendations. So prospective customers or even existing customers can see what sorts of people or businesses do business with you. So a little bit about LinkedIn. Um, it started back in 2003 and it was bought by Microsoft in 2016. Now, why this is important is that Microsoft spends a lot of money on continual research, on user experience, and on setting up strategic partnerships. So if you use, for example, uh, a platform for customer relationship management, like uh, HubSpot, for example, as soon as you type in your customer or prospect's email address, um, it automatically searches on LinkedIn for information about that company and serves it into, puts that information into your, into your CRM. At the moment, there are 11 million Australian registered users and the statistics show that over half log in each month and they spend a significant amount of time, about 10 minutes, 44 seconds per session. And this is quite a long period of time in comparison to other social media sites and even in comparison to website visits. 
Um, and that is because most users go onto LinkedIn expecting to see discussions centered around business related topics. And they're more likely to read long form content, in other words, articles, and engage in some sort of conversation, online conversation with comments and likes and read other people's comments. LinkedIn is a global platform. There are 706 million members in over 200 countries and regions worldwide. Now you might be thinking, well, you know, that doesn't really matter to me. I'm only a small company based here in the city of Glenira um, and, you know, it's, I'm not going global. But if you think about it, let's think about the old sales model where you may have made phone calls and made appointments and hopped into your car. It may mean that you can go to other, you can target areas outside of a driving distance. Um, you know, taking small steps, you might say, well, there are other customers in perhaps the other side of town, which I wouldn't have gone across to because it's, it would take too, too long to drive to, um, or even regional areas, regional Victoria, or into other states like New South Wales, Queensland, et cetera. Um, you may, it, it, it opens a door for you to be able to expand your business perhaps into other English speaking countries like New Zealand or other Commonwealth countries uh, like the United Kingdom or Canada. LinkedIn is the dominant site for business to business. And um, looking at some research from a company called HubSpot, it has a 2.74% conversion rate for visit to lead uh, conversions. In other words, 2.74% uh, of visitors um, to, uh, to LinkedIn are more likely to become a lead uh, as opposed to the other social networking sites like Facebook or Twitter. It is actually a much higher conversion rate looking for, compared to a, a website which sits often at under 1%. Uh, if we look at LinkedIn versus Facebook as a social networking site, LinkedIn is primarily targeting professionals, so professional networking, brand building, business profile building, and businesses who use LinkedIn are primarily targeting other businesses. There are instances where uh, businesses do target consumers, but those consumer customers are more likely to be professional people. Whereas you look at Facebook, it's more of a social networking site. It's fun and businesses go on it, well, people go on, on Facebook with no specific agenda. They're going in onto it for a bit of escapism. And in the business context, businesses who ordinarily go onto Facebook are targeting consumers. We look at the headspace, the user, user psyche. When people go onto LinkedIn, they're usually hopping onto LinkedIn for a business need and they may be researching or even doing business development, which is what you might be doing. Uh, whereas if people go onto Facebook, they're looking to escape work. They're not in that headspace of looking for work related topics, nor are they usually in that headspace of reading very heavy topics. Um, that, that you may want to share as a, as a business to business um, company. The importance of LinkedIn for businesses is that number one, there are no geographic boundaries, business networking, as we've talked about before. So you can engage with anyone anywhere. Um, in marketing, we use a term called birds of a feather tend to flock together. And that is people with similar interests or similar uh, backgrounds tend to congregate in networks and groups together, a profession, or even where they went to university together. It's also a great tool to demonstrate your knowledge and engage with an audience with a common business interest. Um, it's a great vehicle to position your company brand. And as I mentioned before, LinkedIn works very well alongside your company website. So a couple of recommendations. My number one recommendation before you start, be very clear. So be clear before you begin. So identify your audience and be very specific about that. You might say, oh, well, look, I'm going to target suppliers or I need some more suppliers or I may be looking for more customers or I may be looking for more strategic partners. 
um, be specific about the geographic regions or geography and perhaps a job role as well. So as an example, you might say, um, I am targeting, you might be a software developer and you may be targeting international airlines and you might say, okay, I'm going to target airlines that are in Commonwealth countries and I'm going to be targeting engineers that work for those airlines. So very specific, very specific. Um, your purpose, uh, why is it that you want to use LinkedIn at this point in time? It may be for brand awareness, um, community or, or audience engagement, content promotion, or you may be quite advanced and you've been using LinkedIn for a while and you may be looking at launching or developing a new product so you could use a platform to, for market research. Um, some of the possible, possible objectives could be to increase sales in a specific geography, as I mentioned before, to launch a new product or service, uh, to attract new investors or strategic partners, better engagement with existing clients or customers, or to build a new audience. If you're brand new to LinkedIn, you may say, okay, well, here's a really easy step. I'm going to engage with my existing customers as well as the community. So community, community engagement. There's very little risk in doing that then. And I'm going to engage better with my existing customers. So in the past, you may have just sent them an email randomly once a quarter or once a year, but by connecting with them, you can engage with them more frequently. So let's dive into LinkedIn. So this is the page that you'll see on a desktop if you, if you um, already have a, a LinkedIn profile. Uh, it's very simple to set one up. It's, uh, it's quite intuitive, but this is what you'll see is on your desktop. I'm going to ask you a question, and that is, have you Googled yourself lately? And the reason why I ask that is that if you Google your name, uh, more than likely, unless you are famous, have a famous uh, you're famous or you, have, you share a, a name with a famous person or you've been in the media, LinkedIn is likely to be the first, uh, one of the first uh, search results. And that is because LinkedIn has a high authority on Google. And the reason for that is that LinkedIn has um, high repeatable traffic. As I mentioned before, most people will spend over 10 minutes on LinkedIn and Google likes that. Google sees repeat visits to, um, to the same website and a, and a long duration on that website as ha having high authority. So that is why LinkedIn is more than likely going to come up as one of the top search results if you Google your name. So I'm going to ask you, if you're going to be on LinkedIn, invest some time in updating your profile. And I'm going to show you an example. So my number two recommendation is maximizing your profile. So here's my profile, and here are a couple of tips, starting from the top to the bottom. The first thing is uh, the URL. You can actually customize that. When you set up your profile, even if you've got an existing profile now, LinkedIn will come up with a combination of letters and numbers as your URL. You can customize this and change it to whatever letters you want, as long, as long as that hasn't been taken by somebody else. And why I recommend you do that is that you can then use it as a, uh, a friendly looking URL if you wanted to at the bottom of your, bottom of your electronic signatures, or uh, even on your business card. It just makes it easier for people to type in a pr a proper words rather than uh, letters, numbers and, and characters. I'd also invest in putting a background image. Uh, see the word Melbourne there? I've used the word Melbourne because I used to live interstate and overseas and I just wanted to position myself as I'm based in Melbourne now. Uh, LinkedIn ha will give you recommendations on how uh, the dimensions of that image. You can use whatever image you want. You can hop onto a free site called Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com, and it'll help you um, get the dimensions right. So you can pop that, pop, pop that straight in there. The other thing you want to invest in is your profile photo. 
you see my photo has my face and it's from the shoulders up. And it's important to do that so that anybody looking for you who you may not have connected to, but they know you, for example, they could be your customer or, your, or a supplier, um, it's, it's easy for them to see you. You see, this is, um, I'm not actually logged into, into LinkedIn with this result. This is my public profile. And you see that there are uh, four other people with the same name as myself. And if you take a look at their profile photos, um, three out of the four are not recognisable. The two at the bottom, the photographs are too far away. It's very difficult to see the lady faces. And the first, the, the very top one, that person hasn't bothered to put a, a photo up at all. You see photo number two, um, the other person with the same name as myself, um, she's, a, she's a fairly high ranked um, professional. She's a vice president within uh, capital markets. Um, and you can see that she, she's fairly high up in, in her profession and she has taken a professional photo um, and that's of her head and shoulders and, and just her face. Whereas the other two photos below, the other two profiles, the photos are too far away. It's very difficult for anybody to identify who they are. Now, this is um, important in that you want to be easily found by your customers, your suppliers, your prospects, um, who may know of you. They may have met you at a conference, for example, and they may be looking for you, and they may type your name in, um, and it's, it makes it much easier for them to see, oh, yes, I've, I've found the right person, and I'm going to connect to that person. Invest a bit of time into your positioning statement um, and also LinkedIn will prompt you to uh, put in details of perhaps your, where you study, um, a link to your company website, etc. Uh, I'd also then put in, invest a bit of time in writing an introduction paragraph and don't write just about what you do, but perhaps a why. It'll be very clear um, as to what you do as they, as they delve further into your profile. But why you do it is often something that is more compelling uh, to someone reading your profile for the first time. Um, I often write it in, well, I've written mine in, in, from a third person. So I haven't written it about this is why I do it. I've written, I've written it in a way that somebody else might have written this about me. Uh, if, you, if you're not very strong in writing, perhaps you can ask someone to help you with that. Uh, but it is worthwhile investing a bit of time in that. Um, as a business owner, your profile is a reflection of your personal brand. It provides an opportunity for you to demonstrate your knowledge, your background, your, your education, and where you are a member of um, professional associations, etc. Um, so use that because it's not only because it's there, but it, it positions you a bit better. Top tip, um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is also on mobile. If you have the mobile app, um, or if you don't, I would highly recommend that you download it because you can use it to replace your business card. If you hop onto the mobile app and you will see in the search bar, there is this funny square, which I've circled on the screen. You click on that, it will show your QR code. Uh, it will show your QR code on your phone that you can either download and you could save it as, a, as an image, you can share it, um, or you could use it on any pre printed collateral or even on your website if you wanted to. Now how I use it is that if I'm at, let's say, um, a business lunch or a conference or what I tell my clients to do is if they're at a conference and they're a, a speaker, um, whip out that QR code at the end of your, you know, when, you, when you're doing your professional networking and rather spending a lot of time collecting business cards and then having to key them in, whip out your code, scan each other's codes and you can connect that way. It makes it very, very simple and it saves you a lot of administration when you get back to, back to the office. There is also um, an app within your mobile phone um, that you can download called Share Nearby Share. 
And you can, if you turn on the location and you turn on that nearby share, let's say again, I'm at that business lunch or I'm at that conference and I turn on my nearby share, or it automatically, um, anybody looking for me that's also got their nearby share on, we can identify each other, even though we may not be within a metre or two of each other, we're in the proximity of the, the same room, we can, we can find each other. Again, it's a very time saving and it's a really easy way of connecting to other people. You can also use LinkedIn to expand your professional network. So number one thing I would do, if, especially if you're starting out for the first time and, and when you know times are quiet, grab out your pile of business cards or your email contact list and start looking for those people on LinkedIn and connect with them. Um, you can send an intro email. I always find that if I send a little um, personal message as to the context of how I know how I know that person, um, they're more than likely to connect to me. You can also join interest groups and start to follow companies. And I would start making it a habit to engage. So if you look on um, interest groups, for example, I'll go back to my example of the um, software client that's looking for aviation commercial airline engineers. Um, he joined a number of aviation groups and started to make it a habit to participate in those conversations. And by having comments and commenting on other people's posts, he got to meet more people online. I would engage with your contacts um, via their feeds regularly because just like Facebook and other social networking sites, the more you engage um, with somebody's, somebody's profile or, or, or what they're posting, the more likely that you will also come up on, onto their wall as well. Now, just a note with LinkedIn, it's the quality of your network, not the quantity that's important. So I would also recommend that don't just connect with anybody, be, you know, be quite targeted. I wouldn't necessarily connect with my neighbour just because I know him or her. Um, but if they were somebody that was in a similar sort of profession or they were perhaps one of my um, target markets as a, as a supplier or a customer or a partner, then I might connect to him. It's not the same as being friends on Facebook. So you can choose to be very targeted. Third recommendation is make sure you set up your company profile. I would set a company profile up even if my company was small, um, if I had employees. So if you're a sole trader, well, perhaps not. But if you're, a, a let's say, a, a business consultancy or um, financial planner and you've got you know, a handful of employees, even if you have like five or six employees, it's worthwhile doing because it's another way that your um, prospects can easily research your company. They can see the employees that work for your company and for all you know, they could be connected either first or second degree to your employees. Um, and it's also an opportunity to identify any, yeah, like I mentioned, common connections. And common connections could be even within the groups that you're members of with the associations that you're members of. Um, LinkedIn is also, as I mentioned before, a high authoritative link um, to your website. So this is what we call off-page search engine optimization. So if you have your own company website and you have a LinkedIn profile, you will link your company profile from LinkedIn to your, to your website. Um, and and it, it actually helps with your search results. It's an opportunity to showcase your news, videos, and other content. And it's also a prospective, um, it's a, a professional landing spot for prospective employees. I hear a lot of small companies say, oh, it's very difficult to get good quality employees. And if you have a professional landing spot like LinkedIn, most prospective employees like to do a little bit of research before they, they take them a job, especially if they get down to that pointy end of the interview. So I want to know, you know, what sort of people work here? Um, are there people that I know? 
uh, people have the same education level that I do. And this is a very good way for them to be able to research your company and, and your staff. LinkedIn for your company, when you set up your company page, also gives you um, analysis. So it gives you statistics that you would not be able to get on something like Google. Um, when you have Google Analytics on your website, it just tells you the number of um, visits or visitors and the geography, but it doesn't tell you the job function of the people visiting your site. So this, this is just an example. I've got it showing you an administrative view of a, of a company page and you can see that between the November to December time frame um, the number of visitors you know 60% of, vis of visitors to the company page here were in the business development area and 40% in operation very low stats for this company but this shows you um, the types of visitors to your company page this is very good when you're wanting to run experiments like market research pose a question out to your audience and you link you take them to your company page and you can see what sort of people are engaging so here's a top tip about building engagement i would start to uh, rec highly recommend you start liking commenting and sharing regularly um, posts from your linkedin connections from interest groups and from companies that you follow and why you should do that regularly. Look, if you don't want to make comments, that's fine. But liking, it just, it, may, it means that your profile is not a dormant profile. So the more active you are, the better, the better it is. Um, you may just decide to just block out, you know, 15, 30 minutes a week in your diary just to just do that. And before you know it, it may actually become a habit that you're on it more regularly. As mentioned before, very early on, you can create articles, so create content. You can write articles and ideally linking it to your website. So as an example, um, you may write a long blog article on your website and then write an introduction article, which is just an abridged version on your LinkedIn profile with a read more hyperlink to your, actual, to your website. This is a very good way to build traffic to your website where they're more likely to um, take action. In other words, um, hit the contact button or request a quote or book a meeting, etc. The other way to build engagement is to share content. And I understand that not everybody is very good at writing content or don't have the time to do it, but you might be reading content on perhaps a media site that's interesting um, that could affect your profession or, yeah, that would be interesting to your audience. And a way to do it is to take, a, take that article, share that content on LinkedIn and add your own comment and ask for an opinion. An opinion is what I would call the call to action. So I wouldn't just share the content and say nothing. I'd say something like, oh, I read this, this was very interesting. Um, in my experience, this, what has your experience been? That's an open-ended question. And you ask, you're inviting um, comment and engagement. The objective in doing these things is to position yourself as a specialist in your area or somebody that's knowledgeable about your, about your profession or your field. Um, and that it also demonstrates a level of um, interest Obviously, you're not just selling something, you're genuinely interested in that particular area. So here's an engagement example. So um, this is an article that uh, one of my contacts has shared, and she's done a couple of really good things that I would, I would highly encourage you to do. Um, she's used links, hyperlinks, all the blue um, font there, they're, they're hyperlinks. So she's tagged um, actual people and tagged uh, a government website and she's used hashtags. Um, she addresses a specific audience with a call to action. So she has posed a question uh, to the audience and it's not her own content. So she's leveraging off her connection 
um, she's, so she's leveraging off the content, she's leveraging off the connections, and she gives a very clear call to action. So this would bubble up on the feed of her connections, who she's tagged, um, who have perhaps liked or commented. When someone tags you, you're more than likely to have a look at it. <laughs> and if it's somebody that you are connected to, you're more than likely to either just, if you don't want to make a comment, you're more than likely to just like it. Um, and that would come up on your connection feed. So that was a very, very smart way of, of engagement. Here's another one. This is a CEO of a, of a tech startup and he tags his own company. So he's got his own company uh, page on, on LinkedIn. So he tags his own company and he shouts out some recent activity that his team have, have created. He makes a statement about how well uh, his team or their, his company is doing, so he's positioning his brand and he tags his staff. So he, he leverages off their connections and he uses the hashtags as well. So anybody clicking on any of those hashtags um, are likely to see, more than likely to uncover his, his content that he's just shared there. So what you can do today, um, number one, you can refine your professional profile, uh, get connecting, so grab that stack of business cards, email lists, client lists and start connecting. And I probably wouldn't do it in one big hit because it would just be overwhelmed. Um, it would be overwhelming. And, and as they connect to you, you know, you wouldn't have time to reply back. But perhaps just, you know, to do a handful. You might just do your business card today and do your email lists later on in the week and do your client lists, you know, later on a couple of days after that. What I like to do when I connect to someone, and you may want to do that too, is when they connect back to you, um, LinkedIn prompts you to drop them a message. So I drop them a message and say, hi, you know, it's been a while. Um, you can do that. The third thing is create your business page, especially if you have employees, as mentioned before. And number four, join special interest groups, start to follow companies, listen and start engaging. And number five, experiment, test and refine. Um, you can just experiment to see if you can get any engagement. And, you know, if you're posting a bit and you're not getting any engagement, perhaps look around at other people's posts that are getting engagement and see if you can cookie cut and, and perhaps even copy some of the, the terms that they use, see how that works for you. And that is it. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, webinar. And if there are any questions, please contact us at cityfutures at Thank you.